Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the clever local adjustment tools in DxO Photo Lab 7. You'll find some of these in the DxO Knit Collection too, though in Photo Lab, they're taken a lot further with more options and more control. To show you what they can do, I'll take this dusk scene with a dramatic sky and see if I can improve it by balancing up the sky and the foreground more effectively and bringing out some detail in the buildings on the left. And this is my finished image. I think it works pretty well. The three local adjustment tools I used are the graduated filter, control line and control point. Photolab 7 also has a brush tool with or without auto masking and a luminosity mask tool which makes masks based on brightness level, but I didn't use them for this particular photo. To use the local adjustment tools, you need to be in Photolab's customized mode. This is where you do any detailed editing like this. And over in the right sidebar at the top, you'll see a separate button for local adjustments. It's the one with a paintbrush icon. If you click this, you'll see a row of local adjustment tools you can choose from. I'm going to start with the graduated filter tool because I want to see if I can bring up the brightness of the lower part of the picture. And this is a really simple way to do it. So with this tool selected, I can drag upwards from just below the horizon line to just above it. The red overlay shows the area that's being masked. That's the area I'm going to adjust. And don't worry about getting it spot on right from the start because you can tweak it later. Now that I've masked the foreground, I can see a bunch of adjustment controls lower down in the right sidebar. If I push up the exposure value, the foreground becomes much closer in brightness to the sky, which is what I wanted. However, it does look just a tiny bit flat, so I'll also increase the contrast value to compensate. In fact, I'll push it right up to maximum. You know what, it's still not quite enough, so I'll use the selective tone controls just above and reduce the shadows value, and that's more like it. The next area I want to attend to is the sky. It's still just a little too bright for my liking, especially near the top of the frame. I could use the graduated filter again, but from past experience, it can be difficult to keep the brightness and color of clouds if you do it this way. So for this, I'm going to use the control line tool. This is a lot like the graduated filter, but there's a difference. It comes with an eyedropper tool that targets the specific tones and colors you want to adjust. First though, here's a quick tip. The local adjustments panel will show you all the adjustments you've applied so far, and you need to make sure that any new ones don't replace what you've done already. You need to make sure that none of your existing local adjustments are selected if you want to make a new one. Right, so let's try it out. I'll select the control line tool and drag out a more progressive gradient from the top of the picture, as I want the darkening effect to be a bit more gradual. Do you see the difference? There's still the same graduated mask overlays we had before, but this time there's a small eyedropper icon and I can drag this around into different positions. In this case, I want to darken the blue sky, but not the clouds. So I'll drag it over an area of blue sky. Now, when I apply an exposure adjustment, it's only the blue sky that darkens, not the clouds. And that's exactly the effect I wanted. This time, I think I'll use Photolab's Clearview Plus slider too just to add a little more clarity. Because this adjustment is targeted on the blue sky areas alone, you can afford to be much freer with these sliders. I also want to brighten up the buildings on the left side of the picture. And for this, I think Photolab's control point tool will be ideal. It's one of the oldest local adjustment options and dates back to the early days of Nick software, but it's still one of the best. To use it, I select the control point tool in the right sidebar then just click on a representative area of the buildings. They're quite small, so I'll zoom in first. So now you'll see a circular red mask overlay for the control point, and you can drag on the outer edge to change the size if it's too large or too small. I don't worry too much at this stage about what's masked and what isn't. I just go straight to the adjustments in the right sidebar and increase the exposure value. I'll also max out the contrast value and use the clear view plus slider again. So now's the time to zoom back out and judge the effect. 
The XO's control point tool is a million miles from the AI subject selection tools now available in other programs. And it's all the better for that. It doesn't attempt to produce pixel perfect edge selections, but instead blends in local adjustments in a subtle and progressive way. That's both selective and very natural looking. And that's my edits finished. I'm quite pleased with the outcome. And I hope you've got some useful insights into DxO PhotoLab 7's local adjustments, how they work, and which ones to use for specific scenarios. So, thanks for watching, and see you next time.